Aloha! Top of the morning, friends and family. There is something very special happening inside of this enclosure right here with this snake. And we're going to show you exactly what. If you haven't spotted it already, oh, you probably can see it already, can't you? That happens. Well, if this is your first time to our channel, we upload beautifully edited cinematic masterpieces here. But this video is uncut. And today's Uncut, I'm visiting Marlon. If you watch this video up in one of these corners, then you, you know how Marlon and I come to met. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, Marlon and his church flew us out to share our testimony there this weekend, and it was incredible. And also, look, we got Noah's out there. He's playing with some tortoises with Auntie Terry. Huh. Yes. Good times abound. Marlon, you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. I've been keeping reptiles, uh, you know, since I was 20, and I'm 23 now. So I'm just getting a good start, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, for a lot of years I've been keeping stuff, and so just kind of a different collection of things. Really, kind of focus on blood pythons, but I have this thing where I tend to find reptiles that are not taken care of. And so I take them in. So I have some of those here, uh, but uh, a lot of other interests, monitors, that kind of thing. But really love blood, blood pythons. So that's really been my focus for a few years. So cool. Yeah. Let's let's do a little animal tour. Take a look at some of the animals. Yeah. I've got some uh, some baby bloods uh, that I just recently got from Nick uh, Bettini, and I'm um, looking really into seeing these little guys grow up. Uh, awesome little biters that they are and uh, I'll probably get bit here but that's okay uh, as they don't draw too much blood right so. <laughs> ah, nice little strike so this is a this is a beautiful little blood and her little is it a magpie or a yes She's really fattening up nice, really fast. My little sister here. Uh, actually, 007 and then Magpie. Okay, I had it backwards. Yep. But I don't know, just something about blood pythons, their size, their girth, their temperament. A little bit of nasty is good, right? And uh, <laughs> I kind of like that about the blood pythons. But I've never really been tagged by a big one. Mm. I, I've actually never been tagged by a big one either. No? No, just little babies that could barely break skin. Yeah, babies are all about uh, tagging somebody, right? Speaking of babies, I don't know if we should make everybody at home wait to see what's going on in there. Or if... You know, I think it'd be cool to see some of the model lizards too. Yeah. I've got uh, recently always kind of wanted a uh, yellowhead or a... Kamingi monitor, and um, so I decided to get one, and I went to Michael Stefani, which that guy knows everything about monitors, right? And so, and yeah, Michael maybe. Stefani certainly knows his monitors, no so doubt about can, that. Yeah, we can draw him out. Come on, buddy. The changes in this guy are, whoops, he snagged that before I could get him out. We'll get him again, but the changes in this guy happen almost daily, like his color keeps changing, gets brighter, um, it keeps, uh, as he shed, he just gets, gets crazier every single day. What I love about him too is just his personality is just super cool. Um, as soon as he gets that one down, I'll get him to come out. You put the water in there and two minutes later, it's a mud pie. That's, that's kind of the Kumingi monitor way. It's also the Cusco kid way. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> this way, fella. Come on out, buddy. He's still like, hey, 
Like, like, what's that big camera over there, though? And I haven't got that bird completely down, that little coil completely down yet. He's <laughs> like, I really do want it, though. Yeah, I fed him a little bit last night, thinking, okay, I'll just help him a little bit. But um, otherwise, he's charging right out. He's up on my head, wherever he can get to. He's probably also wondering who's that strange island being that's got <laughs> sitting out there. He smells kind of different. Here we go. Come on, buddy. It is, it is interesting how they recognize different people. Because, like, my wife can be in here, and um, he doesn't come out much. He sees me. Of course, I'm the guy that feeds him, and he just comes running. Yeah, that's that's true. Even even animals in the wild, like Noah, as you saw, um, gets bit by stuff, and that's not just this trip. Like Noah gets bit by right. things regularly. Like like snake. We have a couple of corn snakes, and they bite him and nobody else. Right. Yeah. You, my sons will tell you that everything I've ever had has bit them, but not me. <laughs> so it's great to have kids around, um, you know, to kind of test a little bit of uh, the different animals' temperaments that you have. But. We'll let him think about that a little bit. Yeah. Come out. Let's take a look at these. Uh, what's the story with these spiny tailed dudes over here? Yeah, so those uh, those were in a pet shop. Because what you do, right, is you tour pet shops. That's a professional. Uh, and they were all but dead. I mean, they were just dehydrated. Temperatures weren't right. They were way too low. It had a tiny little light bulb. My wife was with me and I'm, she's like, you're gonna buy those, aren't you? And I said, ah, I can't let them die. So I brought them home, I began to hydrate them and uh, every day for a little bit. And uh, after about a week, they started eating really well. They got rehydrated and they're just super great and uh, kind of got them because of my grandkids. So it's a little bit like a bearded uh, in that sense that they're super handleable and uh, just decided to keep them. So the temperatures they love, you know, hot spot of 130 or so. And so as the temperatures turn on, they do too. They really wake up once they get good and hot. I think one of the monitors I really wanted to check out was these guys up here because they're so tiny but yet so long. Now, I know they're probably a little bit flighty being young and they're also small as anything yeah, these are my Kimberleys, and um, I've had different monitor species over the years, and I uh, just really wanted to work with some of the Australian stuff, and so I just recently got a trio of these Kimberleys, and so I'm pretty excited about what's going to happen um, with them. They're eating well, um, feeding them red runner roaches, uh, feeding them some turkey once a week just to kind of get enough protein, um, but they like to hang upside down. I'm not sure what that is, but... Uh, they will hang upside down any chance they get. They're starting to tame well. I can uh, handle them a little bit and feed them off tongs, which is always a good step uh, as you're beginning to tame them. So, super cool animals. Um, but they can squish right through that little... They can, yeah. So I put a piece of tape on here. Here again, using these, you know, because Michael Stefani, um, just talking to him about how to tame them and have kind of a minimal setup and uh, it makes it really easy to get in there to feed them uh, to get them some turkey off of tongs and uh, they're starting to tame pretty nice pretty sweet definitely don't want to open it up and lose them break your tape and then my luck, we will not have a, you won't have any Kimberly monitors when I leave here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up here. This is the thing we've been, I think people have been really waiting to see. We tease at the beginning of the video. So you guys can see what's going on back there. That is a blood python sitting on a clutch of eggs that we were hoping and really hoping would pip before it was time for me to leave this beautiful state. But, I mean, they're real close. This is like day 60, 
And the cool thing about this, well, there's a couple cool things about this. First cool thing is that I just had my first clutch of python eggs that mom kept until they hatched. So I just thought it was really cool that Marlon had the same thing happening. Um, his clutch is a little cooler in the sense that he got this girl. She had never been paired with a male. And uh, so this is a, a parthenogenesis clutch. So there's a lot of you guys out there might know. Uh, if you watch Jurassic Park, they talk about life will find a way. And that's that's the deal with parthenogenesis. You know, mom just makes a copy of herself, even though she's never been with a male, and decides, you know what, we're going to have babies anyway. And Marlon's had his uh, flashlight in there checking around, and there's babies inside moving around. So those are that's a viable clutch. And the thing that's probably going to happen is is this. Uh, this is exactly what's going to happen. I just know it. We're going to finish this video. Marlon's going to drive me to the airport. Sorry about the mic noise. He's going to come back home, and those eggs are going to be pipping. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, or my wife's going to call and say, oh, they've pipped. <laughs> so, they're right there. They're right. just right there. Yeah, they, those things are going to cut out of that egg any second. Dude. I, just, I just know it. Um, we give up on, on that guy over there. He's... Let's see if he'll come back out. Come on, buddy. Oh, he is poking. See how he does with my hand. What's up, bud? Wanna come climb out here? Come on, come on. Hang it on my hand. It's gonna be great. He's like, he's like, you got some chicken on those fingers? What's going on? Yeah, nice slow tongue flicks. He's like, nope, don't think so. <laughs> I'm like, that's not my brand of human today. <laughs> What's up, bud? Normally he'll just charge right out. You know, it's, it's kind of strange. Some days he's really into rat pups or fish. The next day he's really into quail. And it seems like whatever I feed him really makes a difference in, in how he's doing at the moment. I thought if I shut up for a second, he'd come out, but it's all good. He'll, he'll come, you know, the funny thing is he's also, he'll, he's going to come right out of there right after we end this video. That's exactly, exactly. what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but Hey, I just want to share with you guys, uh, this spot this weekend, we got a great video coming for you. going to go out and uh, check out some of Dave Kaufman's favorite herb spots in Southern Minnesota. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Just wanted to share some of Marlon's animals with you. And also he's going to be building an entire reptile room down below in the basement that's going to be like probably three four what five times the size of oh all right <laughs> now he's out he's like i'm gonna i gotta prove you wrong i'm coming out right now yeah maybe he's not even hungry today nope, <laughs> nope. he's like get that island thing with the camera away from me and we can talk <laughs> All right, but yeah, check out the uh, video coming this weekend. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna, it's it's a lot of video. It's gonna go into one edit. Should be, should be pretty good. But some great stuff. Yeah, yeah. some some pretty some pretty good stuff. Uh, in the meantime, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we will see you on the next video. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.